Hi everyone, I'm Kaido. Today I'm going to talk about based eigenlayer. Uh, I do research AVS designs at the team. Thank you so much for inviting me. It, I know when I came here, I'm going to be the, probably the, the dumb, dumbest one. So I made these slides, you know, to be more fun and not super serious, and just sharing my two cents on how I'm seeing things from my side. Uh, first thing is, you know, most of these things are just for laughs. You know, don't take it too seriously. Things are subject to change. Uh, another thing I want to preface is I'm not here to advocating for base pre-conf. There's a lot of trade-offs. You know, if you have any concern, please forward all your concerns to Justin Drake on Twitter. All right, uh, sorry. Uh, what is eigenlayer? Just quick setting the stage. Eigenlayer creates a new primitive called restaking that allows you to contribute economic security to new proof of stake blockchains. What is based? I think I'm actually very curious if anyone has you know, heard a definition of what is based or have one in their head. All right, I have one hand in the way back, but I can't give you the mic. So I'm just gonna say mine. This is my definition of based. So based is a concept of utilizing the Ethereum validator set to make commitments for additional features. And the key part I wanna mention here is you know, Ethereum validators, additional features. The commitment is, you know, how you enable these different things. And there's a lot of discussions, you know, going around in the, in the, in the space. Everyone's very, very smart. There's only a set amount of cake. We're all trying to split it. So it goes in one of the part I want to mention why, what, it, what is it means to base is the Ethereum validators are making the commitments. And why is it the Ethereum validator making commitment really important for base is because that's where decentralization lies and that where, where the network effect lies if it's captured by any other centralized entities across the other stacks, in the long run, it could be very detrimental to the protocol. All right, so base sequencing, I think we talked about a lot about it today in the early mornings. So this, I wanna use it as, you know, uh, sort of quick 30, 40 seconds to get everyone on the same page. Um, so this is a diagram from Justin Drake's slides. Uh, I made it myself afterward. So you have the builder, talk to the relay, talk to the pre confer who's like a new entity. And the pre confer talks to the block, uh, talks to the proposer, and the proposer, you know, have the ability to pre comp to certain transactions. And to draw a line in the middle here to the right is what's inside the protocol and to the left, what are outside the protocol. And the dotted line means, you know, the communication is happening across in protocol participants and out of protocol participants. What is based block building? Have anyone heard of this? BBB? All right, I'm gonna name this. All right, BBB, it just means you're using the Ethereum validator sets to build Ethereum blocks. Right? This is the most basic thing that exists in the current Ethereum world. And how it works is sort of builder talk to multiple relays, wink, wink, uh, maybe they don't. And these relays all connected to the proposer, right? And if you, if you see this, most people are very familiar with this diagram, and most people would think, oh, this might be very similar to here. And this is one observation I've made in the, you know, during the calls, I realized it's actually not the case. So the relationship between pre confer and pr the proposer are more like delegation instead of you know, a permissionless market everyone can talk to. Why is that the case? So this, for example, in this diagram, you have one builder, one relay, three pre conferers and one proposer. So what I'm saying is the proposer should only talk to one pre confer because if you talk to multiple, from the user perspective, I don't know who is gonna be offering the pre conf service at what point and whether those pre conf service you know, are in conflict with each other. So this way it creates a lot of dynamic you know, inefficiencies. And the way you do it is you, know, you connect them together, you draw a box on it, you call it a blockchain. Just bro, one more, one more. We, we're gonna solve it all. Just one more blockchain, I promise. Okay. So th in this world, right, this is very different from the builder world. In the builder world, there's multiple builders, multiple relays. You can, as a proposer, you can connect to multiple relays. There's no problem with that. You can you know, do your own auction at the end of the day, try, try to find which bid is the best bid. But in this case, it's not, right? You have to choose one party and give that party its responsibility. So it's a very much a delegation kind of role. 
So delegation and commitments. What is, you know, in the, on, the, on the highest level, what is happening? On the highest level, basically a proposer is basically delegating, hey, I'm gonna give my ability to say what is included in my blog to this person, right? This person, imagine a person is standing to my right and well, on my left. And the, the pre-conferral will go out to the market. The, the market could be users, the market could be L2, the market could be searchers, the market could be anyone. And basically what the pre-conferral will say to the market is, hey, I now control the ability to offer uh, pre-comps for this specific proposer, and he's gonna make a commitment on that behalf. Whenever you have commitments and delegation, the problem is, what is the commitment is broken, right? When, when a pre confer makes a commitment to the end user, say, hey, I'm gonna include your transaction or your bundle or whatever, what if that commitment is not fulfilled? What will happen? Do you slash the pre confer or do you slash the proposer, right? Wh where, where does that relationship go? If, it, for example, if you know, pre confer are the one who are staking money, this is very similar to let the builder stake, then basically we can say, hey, we're gonna slash, we're gonna make sure the pre confers are all staked and they are, you know, have economic stake in the system, so they're not gonna lie on behalf of the proposer. So when the user's commitment gets violated, some economic uh, value will be lost, therefore the pre confer will be more likely to follow the commitment. Alternatively, you can slash the proposer. And what, how would this work is basically if the pre confer commits to an end user, but at the end of the day, for whatever reason, is not reflected in the final block, maybe it's pre confer's fault, maybe it's a proposer fault, the proposer will just get slashed at the end of the day. Both world would be you know, meaningful, interesting, could work, and I do not know which one it will be in the future. And you know, since I'm in eigenlayer, I think about how we can plug in here. And the simplest way is, you know, you just restake that, so you connect the relationship between the two, because eigenlayer at the end of the day is for someone to provide economic value for someone's delegation, right? I give my stake to an operator, and the operator operates on top of that stake. And in this model, it's very similar. The proposer restakes and get delegates of responsibility to the pre confer and pre confer screws up, the proposer gets slashed. Of course, out of protocol, we can also let the pre confer to do some staking himself. So how would that work from far right side, far left side to the far right side is the proposer would restake through eigenlayer that's on the execution layer. And then the proposer would delegate his pre conf responsibility to a specific pre confer and that pre confer will be one entity, and that will be you know, one entity alone. And the pre confer will go out to the market you know, advocating that I have this uh, proposer's ability to make future block space uh, requests, and then the user will, will come into a uh, commitment to the user, and the, if, the user, uh, if the user's request is not fulfilled, then the user will be able to slash uh, the proposer and the pre confer in whatever mixture they want to do. But they, the slashing will happen in eigenlayer. And I put the top right title as a uh, top left thing as you know, restaking because uh, this sort of mechanism is what restaking is. And I just put the eigenlayer logo there. I want to be incredibly neutral since I'm at a neutral builder event. Uh, so that's basically what it is, right? It's very simple how Eigenlayer fits in and you know, ties the two players together, especially when de delegation is needed in this specific thing. And just to recap, one of the key differences in the block building world, you can connect to mul multiple different block builders through the relay, but in this world, you have to delegate your responsibility to pr one pre-confirm. If you don't do that, then you just basically build another blockchain. Okay, what are some problems? The first problem is uh, people quickly run into is like sort of the code star problem, right? If all validator, do we need all validators to be restaked, right? If we need, let's say I have one validator being restaked, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't really make sense for any pre confer to come to the market or even for any consumer to buy any services. The reason is because you don't have a big enough slot share, so you're not, by probability, you're not gonna uh, have a lot of um, ability to sell pre comp slots. So is there any way that you can separate these two, right? So is there a way that the validators who are not restate can also make these pre-conf commitments, but
But now it sounds like a paradox. If you don't make the commitment, how are you going to be slash? Right? Is there any design space in there? Something we're currently thinking about. Black screen. The second thing is standards. This is what I think about a lot because I'm sort of like, I'm on the restaking layer. I, I view everyone else as sort of the application who are building on top of restaking. So in, I had a few very interesting conversations with people who are building pre-coms and the question I always ask is what do you think will be the user flow? And what do you think for the user to talk to the wallet, what will happen? What, what is gonna happen to the front end? Right? When does the user make a pre-conf request? Does it send to another RPC provider? Is it gonna impact MetaMask? Is it gonna impact Coinbase wallet? What about all the other wallets? How is the standard gonna play a role here? And the, the interesting question from this perspective is since there's so many different players in the space, right? not just building pre-conf, there's so many other you know, front end libraries and wallets out there in the space as well. Without a shared standard on that side, that will mean either two things. Number one is someone captures the majority of the market and just wins it all, or no one takes off because the standard is so fragmented and no one's interoperable with anyone and no one have enough slot share to make any meaningful uh, commitments, right? And this is one part of the, the equation, right, from the user side. The other side is, you know, on the, on the relay side, relay still needs to talk to the builder and all these different pre confer right? If I talk to pre confer A, who's building a pre conf service, how do I know I have the same standard when I talk to pre conf B? Or is it gonna be a bifurcation of different relays, right? For example, I am uh, a new relay and I'm only gonna work with this one specific pre conf market maker instead of any other pre conf uh, market makers. So I think these questions become really, really important because if we do not have a shared understanding that we need to build towards a, sh a standard way, then the entire security, not security, sorry, liquidity will be fragmented again because there's no shared coordination layer for these markets who evolve. Or, worsely, somebody can capture majority of it and we go back to the 721 distribution for any market structure. Okay, and that's it for my talk. It's very simple. I, my, I know I'm, not, I'm pretty new to these spaces. So I wanna to toss the question back to the audience at the end of the day, because I know you guys are doing the hard work to make this work. So think about standards, how we can build towards a shared understanding, how we can make this market more efficient and facilitate better dis uh, a price discovery for the end user, but also ensure the decentralization and the uh, Ethereum side is uh, secured. And you know, how do we make sure that not all validators are restaked to be to, for this pre comp service to be valuable? Because in that world, Eigenlayer would have you know, immense responsibility over the entire Ethereum stake. And personally, I do not think that's the best way for Ethereum to grow. Yeah, and I will be very happy to take some questions.